welcome back. I'm very happy to see you again. I hope you're learning a lot about your ADHD brain. In episode three, I talked to you about response inhibition. Response inhibition. Do you remember what that means? You might be saying, are you kidding? I can't even remember where I put my phone. Or you might be saying, I didn't see that show. Well, I'll tell you what it means. Response means something you do when an adult asks you. Inhibition means stopping yourself. When you're in school, your teacher might say, stop sharpening your pencil and go back to your desk. So you respond to your teacher by stopping yourself from sharpening your pencil and going back to your desk. So response inhibition means stopping yourself from doing something or saying something. An easier word that means the same thing is self-control. I bet you've heard that word before. It's like when you go on a diet and stop eating cupcakes and start eating apples so that you can lose weight. Response inhibition is hard for kids with ADHD. Have you ever noticed that sometimes your hands and your legs move without you telling them to? Do people tell you to stop fidgeting or keep still, but when you try to keep still, you can't focus or pay attention to anything else? It's like you have bees buzzing around in your head. Another word for response inhibition is impulsive. Have you heard that word before? Don't be so impulsive, an adult might say, when you cross the street without looking. You might get hit by a car or a truck. One way that your teachers or parents or people that love and take care of you can help you is by giving you wait time. Wait time means giving you time to think before you respond or answer a question. For example, when your teacher is asking all the kids in your class to answer math problems, they might say, I'm going to call on people to tell me the answers to some hard multiplication problems. But before you raise your hand, I want everybody to take a deep breath. Then raise your hand. Let's see if that helps you think of the answers to the problems. Your mom or your dad or someone else who loves and takes care of you might also help you by giving you wait time. For example, they might say, I want to ask you a question. You might get very excited and blurt out an answer before you think. So I want you to take a deep breath and then I'll ask you a question about what you want to do for your birthday party. What do I want to do for my birthday? I want to go to the park, play video games, order a pizza, eat birthday cake. Wait, wait, wait. I know how excited you are about your birthday. But first, take a deep breath. And then I'm going to give you two choices. That might help you and the adults around you make a decision that you'll both be happy about. But you might say, I hate waiting. Giving me longer to wait won't help me. I'll start fidgeting and then I'll start running around and I'll get in trouble. Well, Wait time means waiting just a few more seconds before you answer a question. But I know it's hard to wait. In a few minutes, I'll give you a tip on how to help you wait. But first, let's talk about why everybody finds it hard to wait. Why is waiting so hard? It's because of an old part of our brain called the amygdala. Amygdala. The Y in amygdala makes a short I sound, I. Your amygdala is in the old part of your brain, the limbic brain. Sometimes I call the limbic brain the animal brain because animals like cats and dogs also have this limbic brain. 
and they have the amygdala in their brain too. Your amygdala's job is to be the policeman or policewoman of your brain. When you see something scary in the road, like a snake, your amygdala starts to yell, danger, danger. Of course, you probably won't hear yelling in your brain. What you'll notice is that you start feeling scared, like someone's yelling. And why do people yell? To warn you that there's something dangerous and you need to do something. That's what your amygdala is doing. It's warning you that there's something dangerous and you need to fight it or run away, flight. That's called the fight or flight response. The amygdala's job is to tell your brain that there's something scary that you need to fight or run fast from. You start feeling scared. Your heart starts beating faster. Maybe the muscles in your arms start to get tight because you're thinking about hitting the snake. Or maybe the muscles in your leg start to get tight because you need to run away from the snake. We need our amygdala. But sometimes it yells when there's nothing really scary out there. In the old, old days, when a caveman went out to hunt lions and tigers for food, waiting was scary. The caveman was by himself, and he had to be very alert and awake so that a lion or tiger wouldn't sneak up on him. That's one reason that waiting can be hard. The old limbic animal part of our brain is always watching for danger. Your amygdala is a very important part of your brain. Without it, the caveman would probably have been eaten by the lions and tigers. He needed the amygdala to keep him safe. But do you need your amygdala yelling all the time? Do you want to feel scared all the time? Do you want to feel scared and worried every time you have to wait? There's lots of times you have to wait, like when you're waiting for the school bus or waiting for the walk sign so you can cross the street or waiting for your brother and sister to come out of the bathroom or waiting in the lunch line or waiting in line with your class for PE. There's lots of waiting in school. That's when a lot of kids get in trouble. They start talking to their neighbor and maybe an argument or a fight starts and kids get in trouble. So ask yourself, do you want to feel scared every time you're waiting in line at school? Do you want to get in trouble every time you're waiting for something? If you don't, here's something you can do when you're waiting or when you don't want to feel scared. It's called square breathing. The first time you do this, get a pencil and a piece of paper. You're going to practice breathing while you draw a square. You're going to breathe in and count to four. One, two, three, four. You're going to breathe out and count to four. One, two, three, four. Watch, breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. You'll probably have to practice a few times before you can breathe, count, and draw at the same time. Keep practicing until it's easy. Then, when you're waiting in the lunch line at school and you notice you're getting really bored or wiggly, or you even notice you feel a little scared, you can practice square breathing. I hope to see you next time for the next episode of ADHD and Me. Thank you for joining us. And thanks to John McKenna, LBTV, and the Mindful Youth Institute. For more information on the Mindful Youth Institute, go to mindfulyouthinstitute.org. I look forward to connecting with you on social media. 
On Instagram, you can go to Dr. Keller Coach. On LinkedIn, you can go to Julia Keller Mindful Youth Institute. If you want to contribute to our cause, please go to Charity GoFundMe campaign, Help Teach Bullies Compassion.